Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We've got a great show prepared for you. I think you're going to love it. Stay tuned all the way to the end. It's going to be great. Now, could we're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And could India cause Bitcoin to explode? So, you know, when you think of the Bitcoin market, there's thousands of things going on every day. I mean, if you look at the news, you look at the number of people that are developing apps, you look at all of the, the different things that are going on with different companies and different regulators and different countries and everything else. There's a lot of things going on. And so there won't be one thing that will trigger Bitcoin to explode because, you know, lately it's been going sideways for a while. Um, but when Bitcoin does explode, it'll be a, a something of all of these different factors coming together and causing that explosion. And one of those factors is India. And in, it, the more I dig into this, the more I think that India could be a substantial reason for Bitcoin to explode. And so I want to share with you what I've discovered and what I've learned over the last 10 years. Um, we're going to look into, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my background in information technology and in computer programming. And because of what I've done over the last 10 years, I've got a little bit of insight into what's going on in India with IT. And I think that also relates to cryptocurrency. So let's get into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Now, I'm going to give you my opinion based off of two decades of computer science experience because uh, I've been in the computer industry for two decades now. And so with 20 years in my background, I have some useful information that will help you in this regard. I also want to mention cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. Now, don't just ignore this disclaimer. This is vital information whether you're investing in cryptocurrency or any kind of investment such as stocks or a business or real estate, et cetera, et cetera. Because there's lots of different things that you can invest your money into to try and get a substantial return. Cryptocurrency being just one of those. And so this disclaimer is written specifically about cryptocurrency, but you can apply it to virtually any kind of investment. And I, I, I bring it up because I really want you to, to be careful, to be knowledgeable, and to make the best decisions when it comes to your investments as possible. That's what this channel is about. Is we're here to help you take profits and avoid losses. So crypto mobile apps are on the rise in India following the Supreme Court decision. So a few months ago, the Supreme Court of India said, look, bank regulators, you went too far. You exceeded the bounds and the boundaries of what you're, uh, as a bank regulator, what you're allowed to do. You're trying to go beyond the limitations that are imposed upon you by the Indian government. And so the Supreme Court came down on the uh, bank regulators and said, you've gone too far. You need to loosen up and allow cryptocurrency exchanges and other cryptocurrency businesses to do business with the banks because the banking system had completely shut down cryptocurrency exchanges and other cryptocurrency businesses. Well, ever since that Supreme Court decision that came down a few months ago, um, the number of companies that have been making mobile apps and also the companies that already had mobile apps in India for cryptocurrency have, have just absolutely skyrocketed. Their volumes are going up very, very dramatically because the people in India are going, okay, I can now do this. Now, when you think about India, you need to think, I mean, this is, this is a country with 1.3 billion people. 
Now, the world today has around 7 billion people alive in the world today. And with 1.3 billion people, India alone has the potential to completely turn the uh, cryptocurrency market upside down, to cause the cryptocurrency market to absolutely explode. And a lot of that depends on how quickly India and the population of India get involved with cryptocurrency. And so let's take a deeper dive into this. Currently, with mobile phone subscribers, the purple bars here are the number of mobile phone subscribers in millions, and the orange or, uh, well, yeah, orange is the best description of that color, is the number of landline subscribers in millions in India. And you can see here, as of 2019, now these numbers come from the government of India. And so if you trust India's government, you would say that these numbers are reliable. I've heard numbers all over the spectrum, but because I don't know, anyway, I felt like the Indian government was probably the, the most accurate source for mobile phone customers. You can see here that according to this information, 1.161 billion people in India have mobile phones. And many of those are smartphones. In other words, a large portion of the people alive in India will have access to cryptocurrency as these apps are being developed and actually getting used. And with 1.1 billion people getting access to cryptocurrency and people thinking that cryptocurrency... Because one of the surveys I read recently talked about how Indians and people that live in India view cryptocurrency as a way to, to increase their income. They think of it as a source of greater income. And so with that perspective of cryptocurrency, uh, and now that the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of the use of cryptocurrency in India, the, the numbers are just beginning to explode. They're growing exponentially at this time in terms of the number of people that are actually using mobile apps and actually utilizing cryptocurrency within the country of India. And so we're in for a lot, a wild ride. And one of the things that I didn't realize until I got, uh, I'd been in IT for 20 years, but my first 10 years was working for a local United States company. And after that, I started doing consulting services. And I consult, I've consulted for pharmaceutical companies. I consulted for a state, uh, the state of Oregon. Um, I've consulted for a, a university. I've done a lot of different things with large, large Fortune 500 and government size companies. And one of the things that I've noticed is that there's a lot of IT consultants from India working in the United States. Now, some of them are physically here in the United States, and some of them were working remotely. You know, one of the first uh, consulting contracts, consulting gigs that I worked on, was uh, with one of the Baby Bell companies. And they were doing a revamp of how they did their billing for all of their phone customers. And we had a, a, a very significant project going on. And about two-thirds of the guys working on the project were actually located in India. And so we would, we would get on the phone with them once a day and talk to them about what they needed to work on and talk to them about what progress they made in the last day um, and find out uh, where things were at and then test what they had worked on to make sure that what they did was actually working the way the client expected it to work. And so all of that sort of stuff opened my eyes to how much India and people from India are working in the IT industry right here in the United States and remotely from India, uh, they were being contracted. And so I did a little bit of research into this and I learned that 80% of the IT revenue in India is from consulting services where they're uh, consulting the companies outside of India. And I thought that was significant. 80% of the revenue from IT companies in the country of India 
is revenue that's generated by serving companies outside of India. So India, one of their largest, now this is a list of the top three, but there's hundreds of companies in India that do IT work. But these companies are massive, massive companies. For example, Tata Consultancy Services does $22 billion a year in revenue, and they have 448,464 employees. Now, any company that has close to 500,000 employees, that's a big company. I mean, your payroll alone is enormous. Um, and for Tata Consultancy Services to be doing 500,000 employees and 22 US dollars, uh, 22 billion dollars in revenue is, is mind boggling. That makes them one of the world's largest companies. And so what we really need to understand here is that people that live in India are very, very computer savvy, very, very tech savvy, literate with uh, computer technology. And, and this, this number of employees, it's both men and women. I can't tell you how many w Indian women that I've run into uh, that were uh, uh, computer, uh, computer programmers. Um, they were, they were testers. They were working in the test group. I mean, they were, they were all over the place. And so this is not just men. This is men and women uh, from India and all, I mean, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is they know what they're doing and they have a lot of experience with technology. So for them to adopt cryptocurrency is an easy migration to make. And given that the vast majority of this 500,000 employees are located in India, they're going to be able to help their friends, their families, their co-workers, uh, people who don't understand cryptocurrency. They'll be able to adopt it and then share it with them. Infosys is another company. They do $12.78 billion and they're two, they have 242,371 employees. Wipro was the third company I wanted to mention to you. They do $8.09 billion in revenue and they have 175,000 employees. And again, with all three of these companies, the vast majority of their employees are located in India and they are the kind of people that because they're, they work in the IT industry and because they understand technology and computers, they will be quick to adopt cryptocurrency and they will be quick to share it with their friends and relatives. Now, another area that makes cryptocurrency so huge in India is a lot of these people that work for Tata, Infosys, Wipro have also immigrated to other countries. While, while the majority of people still live and work in India, I've run into a lot of Tata employees here in the United States and Infosys and Wipro. They have enormous presences um, in countries all over the world. And so what happens quite frequently is the people that are working in other countries are making really good incomes and they're sending some of that money back home to their families. Well, in order to send that money back home to their families, they need a service that does that cheaply. And if you go to MoneyGram or any of the other services out there that you would typically think of as a way to send money home to another country, they charge huge fees in order for you to send money to India. Well, if you used cryptocurrency to send money to India, it's cheap. I mean, uh, it wasn't that long ago that I saw a multi-million dollar Bitcoin transaction that was, in that was completed for less than a dollar. Where can you send millions of dollars anywhere around the world for less than one dollar? Mind-boggling. Well, anybody who's in the Indian IT industry understands that cryptocurrency is a very inexpensive way to send money home. And a lot of these men and women 
go home on a regular basis. It's not uncommon for somebody in IT to be taking two weeks, three weeks, four weeks off because they're traveling to India to visit their family and then they'll come back. And while they're gone, you know what they can do? They can help their friends and family who have cell phones and mobile phones get hooked up to some of the different apps that are now available in India and be able to send money from other countries to their family in India. Also, because they are on a mobile phone, if they use FaceTime or similar services, they can sit there right on their laptops and show their family what they're doing on a laptop, talk them through it, help them be able to hook up to say Bitcoin or some other similar service and be able to transfer money home for them to be able to use. And so there's a lot of different ways that these kinds of mobile apps are going to open up the market to India as a whole. And if India is the only thing that happens in the next year, India alone could cause Bitcoin to explode. But India is not the only game out there. There are all kinds of things going on in the cryptocurrency industry. That's why there's so much news on a daily basis. Whether we're talking about institutions, we're talking about retail investors, we're talking about people in China or other locations anywhere around the world, cryptocurrency is on the verge of exploding and going from a very, very small number of people that actually use it to seeing huge numbers. Um, and so this is my opinion. This is not financial advice, but I really think that we are on the verge of something huge with Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and the entire cryptocurrency industry. Hey, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? Do you disagree with something that I said? I'd love to share with you and to, to communicate with you. Please leave a comment below about this video in the comment section. If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear your polite disagreements. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.